go ahead and open the meeting at this time. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Please be seated. I have to tell you, every time I say the Pledge of Allegiance, I, as an elementary school principal, um, we had groups come in every every week. We had a different classroom come in and do the pledge. And I didn't know anybody in kindergarten, first or second grade, who didn't pronounce it liberty. <laughs> so it always, I'm always thrilled to hear it said correct. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Tonight's meeting, we have uh, one topic to discuss, and that is the uh, COVID-19 reopening plan for 2022, um, mask optional. We are required by law to have a meeting prior to uh, making any changes to this. So uh, we went ahead and, and scheduled it for this week as opposed to our regular board meeting, uh, which is next Monday night at 6.30. So this is a special meeting. and. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Mrs. Jana to present uh, what we have and what we've had, what we have, and what we are um, getting from the state. So I'm going to ask Mr. Kissler to pull up our current plan, and then I'll go through the recommended changes based on our work and compliance with the Indiana Department of Health, which we've been following all along. We've also been tracking our data throughout the district. Um, have noticed that uh, our data is significantly changing as well. Right now we have six students who are COVID positive, one adult who is out COVID positive. So uh, working with the Dave Dahl, our head nurse, as well as attending the Indiana Department of Health uh, meetings, these are our suggested recommendations. Under Roman numeral one, Mr. Kissler, if you would scroll down to item D. We would suggest that we strike all of item D. Under letter E, we are suggesting that it read all individuals who have been exposed to a person who has tested positive for COVID-19 do not need to get tested or self-quarantine. So we would be striking out the words are fully vaccinated and everything after the word quarantine, starting with that word unless. Under letter F, we would um, begin striking out um, after, for the time period set by the CDC, uh, we would start striking out immediately following that. The words and are strongly encouraged to cooperate with contact tracers would be uh, struck out. On page two of our current plan, under Roman numeral two, letter B, um, we would ask that it read, mask or face shields are optional and will be ready, readily available for any student or staff per request. And we have fielded some of those calls and I'll work with administrators to make sure that they're aware of that. So that would be our suggested changes there. Under Roman numeral three, letter A, we would suggest striking after the word individuals. So it would read individuals within the state of Indiana should engage in social, social distancing with all other individuals. The phrase social distancing means maintaining at least six feet of distance from other individuals. And that's where that statement would end. Under Roman numeral five, we would strike everything as this is exemptions to face coverings. And since we would be mask optional, it would negate everything under Roman numeral five. So we would be picking up on page. Can I clarify? Can I? The, that would mean we don't require masks on the buses either. On the buses, <coughs> it's a federal program. It's a federal program. Thank you. On page four, under Roman numeral six, under screening, <coughs> letter B, we would take out the words quarantine, quarantine the student, and contact the parent. Um, I'm sorry, we would just take out quarantine the student. 
under Roman numeral 7, we would take out all of letter D. Under Roman numeral 8, we would, we no longer have to notify the Indiana Department of Education. That was something we were having to do on a weekly basis. We would um, uh, strike the, uh, the, I, the triple, the three there, I guess it's probably a typo, but we would take out parents and students in the classroom with a positive person. And then number four would read, the school will notify the Fulton County Health Department if our absentee rate for COVID like <coughs> illnesses reaches above 10% for further guidance. This is a reflection of protocol prior to COVID when we worked with the um, Fulton County Health Department. Uh, page <coughs> five, uh, Roman numeral 10, um, under letter, at the beginning, it would just read persons who have been in letter A, if not tested for COVID-19 or if tested negative, then we would follow through. You're on number nine, Scott. You're going to move up. You said Roman numeral 10, correct? Roman numeral nine. I'm sorry. Okay. <coughs> um, we would take out um, on item two, their other symptoms such as coughing or shortness of breath would remain taking out the words have improved for two uh, days continuously, and we would state that there's other symptoms such as coughing or shortness of breath are resolving. We would strike number three. We would strike on the next page all of B and all of C. Under Roman numeral 10, restroom use, we would strike students shall wear masks or face shields in all restrooms unless qualified for an exemption. Um, and then we would add to section 9, so I know that we need to go back up. If tested for COVID-19 and positive, they may return to school if um, five full days have passed them since symptoms started. They've been fever free for 24 hours without the use of fever reducing medication and symptoms are resolving. And they are able to wear a mask at school for an additional five days. So that would be days six through 10. That would keep us in compliance with the Indiana Department of Health and would be the recommended changes based on the <coughs> session we went through with them. Jan, I just wanna make sure I'm, I'm understanding because I think maybe I was looking at number four which was bus transportation and you were no, but I think I, you said five you're striking all of screening or bus transportation all of the screening not the, the bus transportation. okay because I have yep. no you're not, either, that, not thought, either one of those it, oh. no, because what what's on our it's we have the clean here. copy yeah so when they struck five that makes a new five here for screening so five here but, Scott scroll back a little bit please so five on here is is bus transportation. No, mm -hmm. it, it, keep going, keep going. Come on, Scott. It's the exemptions for mask wearing. I'm pretty sure. So there's not even. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. So there is no exemptions for mask wearing since. Then. Gotcha. This number five is strong. Okay. Correct. The clean copy is available on um, our web on board docs. And then should it be approved, we have plans uh, to communicate that out if accepted as, as recommended. Now, will you still be uh, down in the restrooms uh, segregating classes, trying to keep classes separate? Or the gentleman, social distance yet? Or? The gentleman, at, uh, Jason, do you want to share? You guys go by classrooms anyway, don't you, to the restrooms? Yeah, well, we you have, have them within, and yeah. We go by, we go by uh, classrooms to the restroom or our Okay. Any other comments or questions from the board? I do. Two. I have two things that are kind of a little bit more um, 
like grammatical just clarification. Okay. I want a little deeper than that. So on and I know with so much striking and moving, this was just something that caught my eye and I should have highlighted it. Well, let me go to the first one. The, the, on item nine. On the new copy? On the clean copy, yes. Okay. I didn't work off the old copy at all. Okay. On, on the clean copy, return after exhibiting symptoms, letter B. Excuse me. First, letter A. If not tested for COVID-19, they may return if, and then there's a one and a two, and then the three is, or if tested negative. So how can they have not been tested for COVID-19 yet they tested negative? So I, I would imagine the intent is that if they are not tested for COVID-19 or if they tested <coughs> negative, but just a little cleaner on okay. that perhaps. And then on letter B, letter or item three, they are able to wear a mask at school for an additional five days. I would propose saying they wear a mask at school for f additional five days. So it's not just, oh, I'm able, but no, you are required to wear a mask for five right. days, which is probably inferred, but through perhaps. Through six through 10 after a positive? Yes, okay. How, it's just whichever way that is clear that they must wear a mask then for those days. Is that, rec is that recommended by the Department of Health? Yes. Okay. And actually, the sentence for B says, if tested for COVID-19 and positive, the may return to school if. So you just want to add the Y on that. And there was another one that was kind of similar to that, Casey, where it was an and. It was the nurse calling, and it was may and. And I'm sure it was just, this, okay, there we go. I finally found it good. Under screening, so letter Roman B. numeral five, letter B, near the middle, it says they should report to the school nurse who may and contact a parent or guardian. So I didn't know if there was something else that needed to be put in there or if and just needs to be struck. Again, I understand and, with, and, with and. taking things and moving them, it's, it's hard. And it's especially hard to proofread something you've worked on for so long. That they should all see Yeah, should read, they should report to the school nurse who may contact a parent or guardian. Okay, so that one, the and just needs to be struck. Okay. I, I just know that you all do a wonderful job of working from the document that's approved. And so I wanted to make sure that it was clear for anyone that needed to execute that. Um, Section so, 9B says if they're positive. So the only other suggestion I would make, and this doesn't even necessarily have to be clarified in the document, but um, when we talk about having masks avail readily available, I, I think that is a responsible thing for us to do. I understand that for many of us, we can um, make our risk assessment based on our own health and we, we are um, in, a for in a fortunate position where we can withstand that risk, but we do have people within our buildings who um, maybe they personally are at a higher risk of uh, complications from COVID or, and this is probably more often, but, but live with someone who is at a much higher risk. And it's a balance for these families that have to give up so much anyway. And I know that happens. We've had students for years who have had, who have had that. But at this level, when we, we are still, still, still dealing with this virus, I, um, have been encouraged that the evidence that has come out lately about one-way masking has been generally good, but it's clear that it needs to be a KN95 or an N95 mask. So one-way surgical masking does very little. It's honestly kind of health theater is what it is at this point. But one way KN95 or N95 masking does a lot. And so if we are able to provide, and those can be, I know, on the more expensive side, but if we have a particular student or staff member who needs that extra protection, I would really like to see the school 
acknowledge and understand that those families need that protection and yet we want your student in school and we don't want you to have to choose between the health of your family and your student and so if your student is willing and able to wear a KN95 mask we will provide that and there now that the pandemic has gone on long enough there are many manufacturers of those sure. and even some cute kid size KN95 if we're talking about the younger kids and then it will be up to the parent to enforce that with their students I mean I don't that's something sure. that Fish. We yeah. have some in the district. We'll have to order more, but we have some to get us started. And that, that would just be my proposal to to acknowledge that um, extra burden that that is to lift perhaps what has been uh, feeling like a, uh, a comfort to those families sure. that are dealing with that, sure. but while also understanding that, that <clears throat> most, perhaps the vast majority, are ready to be done with masks. So we would provide the K95, but like if a parent decided they wanted their child to wear a face mask or still wear a surgical mask, that was their choice. Oh, exactly. I'm or not saying that the they should have to. It's just that they, because those are like usually a dollar fifty to two dollars each, and so I don't know how many people will be requesting it from the amount of people who I think are ready to be done with masks. I would guess probably not that many, but in those mm -hmm. situations, then the then the parent doesn't have to feel like they have to front that. That expense. Sure. But but our staff, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that our staff should be the ones that have to enforce that their student wears it. That's that's right. between the parent and the child. That's yeah. I just wanted to make sure that was clear that we're not requiring them to wear an ninety five, but if they wanted to we would right. have them. Okay. Okay, we can work on that. Absolutely. That would we have some to get us started. Um, I don't know how long to sustain, but we can make sure we order. Any just other I heard something interesting today. They did a study on the cloth mask, which seems like a lot of kids use. Uh, the COVID virus itself is five microns. Cloth masks are ten microns between the threads. So that basically tells you why, you know, cloth masks are not very effective. They can go right through it. Okay. So yes, N95 would be a better choice than mask. Anyone else from the board? Okay. Um, at this time, we would like to, uh, I'm just going to preface this to, as to say that this would be voted on. We plan to vote on this issue tonight. And um, uh, we will send out, if it, either way, I mean, we will send out uh, the board's decision via school reach messenger. Um, yet this evening so that every parent would be informed and this would be effective beginning tomorrow. <coughs> Question, Oscar, you got that little... Oh, no. Okay. Sorry, my phone was hot and I was blown away. That's <laughs> 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 a lot of phone calls. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, that's a popular guy right yeah, now. Yeah, that is a popular guy. We need that. Um, are there any comments from... Uh, we have several members of the community and it's nice to see you all here and... Uh, and we thank you for coming and uh, at this time if you uh, anyone here would like to uh, comment we ask that you stand and uh, just tell us your name and we do have a three minute time limit per individual um, for comments so anyone who would care to comment at this time we'll open the floor Go ahead. Well, why are you requiring the six through ten day if a uh, federal mandate is not six through after having a positive test Indiana Department of Health continues to recommend that. They recommend that? Mm -hmm. uh, do we know if that, I mean, when did they recommend that? Through, there was a meeting uh, last week. There, 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 oh, it yeah, yeah, it's recommended, not required. I mean, because as, as he said, most of the kids aren't wearing surgical N95s, and cloth does not eliminate the part. The six to ten day would be if you come back following being positive. Yes. Okay. If you've been sick with the virus, then they are recommending the six to ten day as a way to protect. So, are you going to require N95 or just cloth mask in your proposal? We were we were just discussing that that we would probably require the N95 mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then the school would provide those. <laughs> Didn't say we require N95. Yeah. Just, James, you're saying we should offer. We should offer that. 
Yeah. On the Indiana Department of Health on the, the last meeting I can pull to date. Um, webinar was on 217.22 on slide number 13. Um, that says they should wear a mask when around others at home, in public, and at school for an additional five days. So days six through ten, they're saying that they should. They don't say what type of mask. They do not in, in yeah, their I recommendations. I don't think an N95 is going to be conducive to, I mean, that, that's not a mask you want to wear all day at no. school. Well, and is that six to ten days after they, the positive test or after they start developing symptoms? And that would be six days that day six would be when they could return to school if their asymptom or if their symptoms have been lessened and they are not feverish. I gotcha. I think with what Tom's saying as well, you know, a surgical mask would be required day six through ten. If they choose to wear an N95, as Jenny was saying, we should provide that. But I think a surgical mask is what's been pretty much the standard go-to. I mean, I know there's cloth out there, but I think in our last <clears throat> adoption of this, we talked about uh, close contacts and all that, we would require a surgical mask, not a cloth or a neck gaiter. We would, so, I mean, I, I don't know what you all think, but I think a surgical mask would be what I would recommend for days 6 through 10. Have you ever spent several hours in one of those? N95s? N95s? It's miserable. 10 minutes. You, but you could, we can, and I don't think we should, I, yeah, it's just an I think we should, should require surgical masks. I would say though that the KN95 should be what we offer. We could offer N95s. That, that's a whole other level. KN95s, I travel, I traveled for 10 hours with a KN95 on them was fine. It, the, they make them nice now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I wore one for 10 minutes and I had enough. <laughs> Did we answer your question? But yeah, I, I'm just, the, the kids are having a hard enough time with the mask forcing them to wear a surgical mask for an entire day. I got two kids and they're they're done with it. And I, I've talked to a lot of people around the community and there's been horror stories about these masks as far as, you know, behavioral issues and, you know, things like that. So I, I can't see why requiring six through 10, I mean, after day five, they're saying now that, you know, it's pretty much, you know, over. I mean, so I can understand the five day quarantine, but Six through ten, I think it's just, I mean, you're, you're kind of overkill right there, in my opinion. We're, we're it actually to, says five days, but where did the six to ten day come in? Yeah. The what six to ten day comes in no, on? In our policy, because our policy says five days. Five days after their return, which, which would be day, day six, six through ten, ten, because they cannot return until five days after their positive test or symptoms start. Okay, so they don't have to wear them for six to ten days. No, That's no, how no, I'm no, hearing no. Oh, this no, conversation. No, no. I'm like, why? Days, where six is that through, at? Days six through ten. It's an additional five days. You'll wear a mask. Or, or stay. So this yes. is, or if you yeah. really don't want to wear a mask, you yeah. can stay home and continue to virtual. Correct. Right. I got you. So then our then our opening and uh, uh, reopening policy would need amended as well. We, we have to vote on the type of mask. Is the recommendation to be a surgical mask ward on day six it, But it does say they should wear a mask when around others at home, in public, and at school yeah. for an additional five days. So should does not mean well, required. must or require, and that's up to that. us. She said instead of they should, they sh you, you're going to, uh, you she wanted that updated, that, that they will. If I think that. I read the opening policy as that your recommendation from our administration and health department and yourself is that we do want our students to come back on day six Correct. if they're able, but we would like them to wear, we want, they will wear a mask. The way it reads now, it sounds optional instead of saying if they're able to or they well, need, they're going Katie to. Katie is reading I'm from reading the, the I'm reading from okay. the, the Indiana okay. Department of Health. And this was 18 pages of, that I synthesized for myself into about two paragraphs. You know, I, I went through the ones that were important as opposed to all the other stuff. So. I get what Kyle's saying though. I mean, it does sound like it's optional. It does sound optional in the wording. The way this is written, the, it, cause it, but that's why Jenny, wants that clarified. Said it like that clarified to be, instead of saying they are able to wear a mask, 
say they will wear a mask at school for an additional five days. Did they say when they would, if they would update that language as well? I mean, the CDC is going to change that at some point. Every Tuesday at okay. 10 o'clock, we go through training. I, mean, I, I get it. I, I don't care for the additional five days either because they tell you it's 14 for five days, but that's the recommendation. That's the recommendation. Okay. Uh, any others with questions? Ethan. Yes, um, under item four, the bus transportation, there is still a reference to exemptions part five, which was stricken, um, but also not so much that that should be stricken as well, but the question being, should an exemption section still be in the policy or maybe even under bus transportation if it's going to uh, still be required policy that masks are on buses? I would agree. So maybe that should be put back in there somewhere. <laughs> Anyone else? Hello, my name, is, my name is Deanne. Um, can you confirm on, on the bathroom, because this copy doesn't match the copy you guys have up there. Are they required to wear them in the bathrooms or on recess? Is no, that what it no, said no. or not? Okay, so it's just on the bus right now. The bus. And then the five days after the, the, po the positive case, after the five days apart. Okay, I just want to confirm that, because this one said it was, so I just want to confirm. So, yeah. Which one did you, did you pull that off of our agenda? Either. Like, no, so this is the hand that I'll take. I don't think so. I'm not sure where. Mr. Zellers, you your hand up. Oh. Uh, so if I understand this right, you're going to vote on this tonight, but after everybody's gone. No. I'm oh, you're going to do it when everybody's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. We have an executive session following this to discuss oh. another matter. To do what? Another I can't hear you with that mask very good. But, okay, but anyway, I can't. I can't have your way to say anyway. But uh, uh, discuss another matter. Okay, now I just sound so much better. And you're six foot apart there. I think you're safe, and I'm thirty foot. So uh, I don't. Know. We will be meeting later to discuss a totally. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I take it since you come up with this proposal that. You're leaning toward making all these changes. I mean, well, we're trying, we're okay. trying to do the right thing, Daniel. Well, and, and, the, and the right thing has been on the fence, and we all know the right yeah. thing has been on the fence. Yeah, but, but you know, kind of the start yeah. of this thing, and you know, I mean, I came into the board where we've already we already had masks mandates and et cetera and so on, it, and it's, it's been challenging. Parents hate them. I hear from uh, people in my own family that, you know, they wanted to quit. I hear people, you know, people stop me in Kroger. Hey, when are we going to get rid of these masks? I know it's not a personal call that I get to make, you know. So, in all honesty, I mean, we wait for guidance from the state. We wait for guidance from the health department. We watch our own numbers um, carefully, very carefully, and, and daily there for a very long time. And uh, probably we're watching them weekly now. No, we still watch them daily. I mean, in the blink of an eye, the numbers can change. But in the recent past, our numbers have been reduced drastically. But we we could we could track when our peaks were immediately following vacations, uh, immediately after Thanksgiving, immediately after Christmas. We could track those peaks. But right now, we are doing very well across the district. But you know, it doesn't take a genius to realize this world. Our world nation is ready to move past us. You know, you. Look at some of these big events. Uh, what, Daytona 500 is a good one. They had tens of thousands of people, and I don't, almost nobody's wearing a mask. You, you go to, well, even Jano's at the uh, Solar Water Conservation, they had a packed house, or something, and I'd say like one mask. But, and then here are you going to make, you know, any, of course, I, it's been a pet peeve of mine. I got two grandchildren, and it has affected their learning. I mean, they're already struggling, and this is the last thing, and you can't see facial expressions, the, the Teachers make, there's a lot of interaction that does not take place with that stupid mask on. And, and children are the least affected. I mean, all the research shows that. And here we are penalizing them and these poor kids. It's horrible to force them. It makes me sick to see these, well, my grandkids go to school with them stupid masks on. They can't breathe through. And I thought, good Lord, I mean, it's time to move on. I, and I'd say COVID affects the younger people, least amount of anybody. It's the older, sick with you know, pre-existing conditions, all that's the biggest ones affected. And I, I think it's very good what Janice said, you know, optional. You know, somebody's had it at work five days. I mean, I, I think that's all justifable, but just mandate like they have been. My God, it's 
well, I, it's getting out of control. I, but anyway, it sounds like maybe you're getting ahead on it. I, but it, that's not two cents worth. But we don't do it. Yeah. You know, who well, let's have some common sense for God's sake. And, and, you know. And I agree, but I also say this is we have since July we have amended this. Yes. This is probably the third time. If I, I John, basing that on my memory, which is not always accurate. So. But I say, well, I give you kudos for at least doing that and all. I, I got trying these schools. I mean, we've been behind the eight ball, this school system, uh, compared to all the others. And, well, you made a statement to me a while back that, well, we're in masks, we're not going to shut down. Well, that done a lot of good. But when we, when we're we the ones wearing masks, guess what? We're the ones shut down. We appreciate that, Daniel. Appreciate <laughs> okay. That. Well, I'm done. Oh, by the way, I read your Facebook post. Ah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question real quick before we proceed in case somebody else caught it too. Section 10, uh, we talked about the bathrooms. She had asked about bathrooms and um, Jason had commented how they're doing it. It actually says under B, Riddle and Columbia schools shall handle restroom usage by classroom visit. To me that says they, they are able to do what they need to do by classroom visit, but then underneath it it says, no more than one class shall be released for restroom use at one time. Do we wanna leave that in there? I mean. That's kind of an over-encompassing thing. If they're in two different hallways, what does it matter we, if there's two classrooms? We only have one hallway that uses a communal bathroom. All the rest of our hallways have bathrooms in their classrooms. Right. So, you know, sending two classrooms, COVID or not, masked or not, to a restroom at one time is not, uh, it's just not safe. Um, so we have a schedule that's already built um, if kids, like I said, if a kid needs to go to the bathroom, they, they get to go to the bathroom. But in terms of sending them as a whole class, um, everybody has a slot of time and, and they get an opportunity to go. Um, and kids, like I said, if they need to just go in between those times or whatever, they're afforded that opportunity. But having more than one, one classroom go to those two is, is just not. Do you know how uh, Riddle handles it? How Luke does that? Because this is both. This is both Riddle and Columbia. I, I think that they're. I think they're under a schedule too. I mean, I think that we both were like for the last year and a half. We were under schedules we, for the classrooms that use those communal ones. So um, we, we've. I mean, we've not had any issues with restroom usage. And part of the restroom usage as a class was for hand washing and stuff too. Prior to going to like lunch. So we have sinks in the bathroom they can wash their hands in there too during the day. But, um, okay, I just, I saw that. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't, yeah. you know, wasn't going to come up later. Okay. So. Anyone else uh, who would like to make a public comment? I do have one last question. Um, which public official are you contacting in Fulton County? Is it Dr. Rayburn, the public health official for the county? Or is that who's been advising you or? We have been following the Indiana Department of Health. So, so it's the state, not the local. Okay. Correct. Okay. Have you asked his opinion on that? We have. Okay. Any others? Okay, so at this time we'll close the public comment section of the meeting. And um, I would uh, entertain a motion on the the issue before us, and that is um, recommendation would be the COVID-19 reopening plan for 2022 with masks optional. I'll make that motion to accept the changes that we discussed tonight. I'll second. <clears throat> Any board comment? Anything anybody needs to say, wants to say? Okay, at this time then, we'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor? And all those opposed? We pass five to one. Five to nine, sorry. I was looking to see if uh, any of our others were. Uh, okay. Five to zero. And um, that complete, concludes the uh, public portion of this meeting. And uh, we can all... Um, uh, we have a message set to go out and that will go out later this evening and parents will be informed um, we appreciate your interest in this issue and we appreciate your comments very much
Thank you and have a good evening. The meeting is adjourned. Yes, thank you. Oh, do I need a huh? Effective tomorrow, yes. What did you say, Dan? Yeah, thank you. Thank you all.